Recently, 60 Minutes aired an interview with Bart Barber, the new president of the Southern Baptist Convention. I'll be honest, it was a hell of a get, even for that particular show, considering all the reasons the head of an organization rife with sexual abuse might not want to speak on national television. Then, consider that they were probably going to ask Barber about the denomination's backwards positions on every culture war issue, and I can't imagine this was going to go well for him. It's just not a good time to be the head of a conservative religious denomination if the goal is making it look good to the broader American public. Anderson Cooper even opened the segment by saying of Barber, with the Department of Justice investigation into the abuse scandal underway and midterm elections looming, we weren't sure he would want to sit down and discuss weighty matters of church and state, but he did. If the goal of the Southern Baptist Convention was to present a more compassionate side of the SBC, I guess the interview was a success, at least for a few seconds. But if it was an attempt to stop the bleeding in terms of people leaving the faith, I doubt this segment did them any favors. So let's start with the good stuff. Perhaps the best moment from the interview for Barber came when he was asked directly about the sexual abuse crisis. Here's some important background on this. You're probably familiar with the Catholic Church's sex scandal, or scandals, where countless priests abused countless kids over the course of decades. The higher-ups in the church often covered up the abuse or protected the priests, sometimes moving them to different churches. It was only after people courageously spoke out about their abuse and newspaper reporters publicized those stories of abuse and attorneys general began suing the hell out of the Catholic Church that there was significant change, at least in the public eye. The Catholic Church could not be trusted to police itself, but thankfully, other people finally stepped in. The Southern Baptist Convention doesn't quite work the same way, because it is not a top-down hierarchy. There are over 47,000 Southern Baptist churches, and they are all basically independent. They do their own thing. They basically agree on an overall statement of faith that says things like the Bible is inerrant and perfect, and the path to salvation goes through Jesus Christ and no one else. But really, they only work together as a group when it comes to donating money for things like missionary work. There's an executive committee, but they famously do not get to tell your church how to operate. The problem with this approach is that if there is a predator employed by one Southern Baptist church, there's really nothing stopping that person from finding a job at a different Southern Baptist church. It's not like anyone is overseeing all that. It requires churches to police themselves, which, again, they don't do. If only there was some kind of central database that kept tabs on all the employees. More on that in a moment. But. In 2019, the Houston Chronicle and the San Antonio Express News reported the results of a long investigation into this exact issue. And they found that over the previous two decades, roughly 380 Southern Baptist church leaders and volunteers have faced allegations of sexual misconduct, and they abused more than 700 victims. 260 of the leaders were either convicted of sex crimes or took plea deals that allowed them to avoid prosecution. It was just staggering information. And it happened in large part because these churches were not talking to each other. They downplayed the abuse. They ignored the victims. They forgave and forgot. And the abusers learned they could always get away with it. Now, in 2021, the Southern Baptist Convention's delegates voted to conduct an independent investigation into the matter. And that report came out this past summer. It was also staggering, because it basically confirmed everything the newspaper reporters found earlier. That was not some secular hit job. And guess what else that report revealed? That there was 
an informal database of sex predators. And the most recent version of that list included 703 abusers, more than half of whom were SBC affiliated. They knew these guys were out there, but they didn't warn members, much less pressure churches to get rid of them. The abuse situation was so bad that the Department of Justice has now announced its own investigation into multiple SBC entities, though not specific individuals, about their mishandling of sexual abuse cases. Again, I tell you all this because that was the backdrop to this 60 Minutes interview. What was the new leader, Bart Barber, gonna say about all this horrific stuff? In what I think was the highlight of the interview, at least for him, Barber, to his credit, did not downplay the seriousness of that report. People who were brave enough to call in to the executive committee to report abuse, for them to be ignored. That's not a strong enough word. We didn't just ignore them. Sometimes we impugn their motives. Sometimes we attack them. The reason why I'm president of the Southern Baptist Convention is because our churches do not agree with that and have taken action to correct those things. Those are solid answers. And he went on to say how angry he was on a personal level because the abusers were tarnishing this religion that he loved so much. God called me to be a pastor when I was 11. I believe in this. For people to sully this hurts me. I hope we can agree that this is all very important for him to say. He admits the allegations are legit, and he says he's bothered by what his denomination has been doing, which means he's committed to putting an end to it. Now, whether or not Bart Barber will do enough for the victims, and to prevent future victims, remains to be seen. But you know what? I believe he is sincere about taking the problem seriously. More seriously than his predecessors, that's for damn sure. That's why many Southern Baptists, including some people who have been very critical of the SBC, praised Barber for his appearance on 60 Minutes. They thought he represented them very well. I'm not doing this to try to accomplish some PR objective for us. I'm doing this because I want to serve God well. Again, that was the highlight for him. Only because he showed he cared. None of that takes away from the very real fact that until now, the SBC has basically ignored and downplayed and looked the other way as these abuses occurred. But the interview just went downhill from there. After the discussion of abuse, it was just a series of self-inflicted wounds. And I don't think people are paying as much attention to everything else Bart Barber said. For example, Anderson Cooper lobbed a predictable question about the church's extreme position against all abortion, with no exceptions. Keep in mind that Southern Baptists used to be fine with abortion until about 1980, when they decided to go all in on forced birth because being pro-segregation just wasn't working out for them anymore. Anderson Cooper wondered what Bart Barber thought about the 10-year-old girl who had been abused and impregnated and had to flee Ohio in order to obtain the procedure in another state. How could Bart Barber be okay with that? His answer? He didn't care about the girl. Uh, our interest with abortion is that we believe that's a human person who deserves to live. And this is a, a little girl who, she has a right to life too. Sure. Even in that case, you think she should have the child? I do. I don't want that to sound like I don't have tremendous compassion for her and her circumstance. What a heartless, thoughtless answer. He didn't say it directly, but the bottom line is that he wants to force children to have their rapist babies, regardless of circumstance, because he believes the fetus matters more than its mother. It's a barbaric stance, void of any real compassion, no matter what you thought about the tone of his voice. It's the end result of believing a fetus is a person from the moment of conception deserving of more rights than the person carrying it. 
I wish we could put an end to 10-year-olds being raped. I'm, I'm trying to work against child sexual abuse. Bart Barber cannot end sexual abuse. Sorry. What he can do is make sure victims of sexual abuse don't face additional trauma. But he doesn't want to do that. He's all in on more trauma. But you don't see forcing a 10-year-old child to go to term with a, a baby that, from rape as abuse of a child. I see it as horrible. I see it as preferable to killing someone else. He thinks that if you are raped and get impregnated, you should have to live with the consequences of that assault for the rest of your life, even if you're a child. And that is all perfectly in line with how most Southern Baptists feel. Bart Barber wasn't saying anything that isn't regularly preached in SBC churches across the country. They don't care how badly a woman suffers in pregnancy, or even if a fetus is viable or cared for. They are hell-bent on forced birth, and it's only recently that some of them are realizing how that actually sounds in the real world and outside their Christian bubble. How could anyone listen to that cruelty and think, yup, I want to be a Baptist? It only got worse when Anderson Cooper, a gay man with adopted children, asked Barber if same-sex marriage was allowed in the SBC. Now, this wasn't in doubt. The answer is no. The question was how Bart Barber would answer it. And somehow he found a way to make that answer sound even worse. Do you still believe that gay people can be, should be, converted out of being gay? I believe that sinners should be converted out of being sinners, and that applies to all of us. Barber ended up promoting conversion therapy, which is both dangerous and ineffective while saying out loud that someone in a same-sex marriage could not possibly be a good Christian. Can somebody be a good Christian and married to a person of the same sex? No. He also denied the existence of trans people by commenting on the gift of gender. We're committed to the idea of gender as a gift from God. We're committed to the idea that men and women ought to be united with one another in marriage. I believe that sinners should be converted out of being sinners, and that applies to all of us. Yeah, sinners should stop being sinners. Being gay to him is like being an alcoholic. Again, those responses were not surprising. It's what you would expect the head of the SBC to say. But for someone in charge of the largest Christian denomination in the country, to suggest gay people can turn straight, which is not how it works, or that people in same-sex marriages are dismissed by the God of unconditional love, which is something a lot of other Christians disagree with, is yet another example of religious cruelty. Even the anti-LGBTQ Pope once asked, who am I to judge when talking about gay people? Pope Francis is no ally but he knew how to be politically savvy. Bart Barber was asked if a married gay person can be a good Christian, and he went with, no. <gasps> Finally, Barber was asked about his personal politics. In 2016, you said, I think it hurts the credibility of my testimony for me to be a vocal supporter of a demonstrably evil man whose campaign platform consists mainly of his evilness. This is a guy who has previously said he did not vote for Donald Trump in 2016 specifically because of how Trump treated women, like in the Access Hollywood tape, and his cruel rhetoric about legal immigration. We're going to build a wall. It's going to be a real wall. It's going to be a wall that's powerful and that people aren't going to be going under or up or around or anything else. It's going to be a real wall. In 2020, however, Bart Barber voted for Trump. What was the evilness that you saw? the way he treated women. I thought that uh, a lot of the rhetoric about immigration was wrongful. Correct me if I'm wrong, in 2020, you did vote for Donald Trump. What changed, Bart? I was encouraged by the consistent pro-life support. I would have had more respect for that answer if Barber just admitted Trump's anti-abortion judicial appointments were all that mattered to him, that he was a single issue voter. The president advocated for some legislation on uh, sentencing reform. Instead, he gave this bizarre answer about sentencing reform that the Republican Party has gone on to oppose. A sentencing reform, uh, something that really addressed 
some injustice that affected uh, minority communities. About that, Trump did indeed sign the bipartisan First Step Act in 2018, which shortened sentences for nonviolent drug offenders and improved conditions at federal prisons. It was good. But if you don't remember that, it's probably because Trump stopped talking about it and Republicans suddenly remembered that they hate criminal justice reform. Helping prisoners is something Democrats do. What Republicans do is attack them for it. So for Barber to pretend that Trump was some kind of hero for signing a bill that was also supported by Democrats, that Trump himself went on to treat like his own daughter Tiffany, completely ignoring it, was a stretch to say the least. More to the point, Trump's treatment of women and his policies toward refugees and immigrants were terrible during his administration. It's not like they got better from when he campaigned. Why was Bart Barber willing to overlook all the concerns that supposedly mattered to him in 2016 by the time 2020 rolled around? Why did women and immigrants stop mattering to him? After all, I mean, Trump's anti-abortion position was already solidified when he ran for office. He said he was against it, even if he said it inartfully. Do you believe, no, but, in, pun but you're, do you you're, believe in punishment for abortion? Yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. We never got that answer. Now, I will admit, it is possible Anderson Cooper asked him about all this and the responses were cut for time. I mean, these interviews always last a while while the segments themselves are relatively short. But there is no indication that I have seen from Barber that he was unfairly portrayed. You believe Joe Biden is the legitimate president of the United States? I do. Despite saying the election was legitimate and Joe Biden was president, both of which are non-controversial statements in the fact-based world, Barber also backed off when discussing Trump's recent actions, including his incitement of the January 6th insurrection. At best, he said Trump's role would make Barber less likely to vote for him in the future. I want to be driven by the principles of Jesus Christ, and uh, that does not involve mob violence. I, I, don't, I don't support that. Anyone who does support that, uh, I'm less likely to vote for them. But that still means there's a chance. The fact that in 2016, I could say something that I was speaking only from uh, 50,000 churches of people I love are represented by me when I speak. Barber hid behind the line that he now speaks for his denomination rather than himself. But he could have denounced Trump more forcefully. He chose not to, because Southern Baptists worship Trump way more than Jesus. Barber did the same thing with Christian nationalism, saying he opposed the idea of Christian dominion. I'm opposed to the idea of Christian dominion, churchly dominion over the operations of government. Which he can get away with because he knows full well that his anti-abortion, anti-LGBTQ positions are being imposed all over the country because of people who share his faith. It's like saying, I oppose theocracy. I just want conservative Christians making the right decisions for the entire country. Practically speaking, that's the same thing. He could have been more forceful about the importance of church-state separation and how his beliefs should only apply to Southern Baptists and how their beliefs should not dictate public policy. That's what Joe Biden says regarding his Catholicism, but Bart Barber chose not to because he's not a decent person and his religion is not a decent religion. He was given softball questions on so many important hot button issues and every time his Christian faith pushed him to take the least ethical road imaginable. Here's why I think that's important. The Southern Baptist Convention has gone from a record high 16.3 million members in 2003 to just over 14 million members today. It is a steep drop. And the numbers show no sign of slowing down. A lot of those members are elderly, and it's not like they're drawing in more young people than they're losing. Interviews like this one help explain why. Because even in Bart Barber's finest hours so far, as the most powerful leader in his faith, 
showcasing his religion to the widest TV audience he'll ever get, he made it clear that Jesus is homophobic, that his God wants to further traumatize child victims of sexual abuse, and that the thrice-married racist who paid hush money to porn stars he was having affairs with when his current wife was pregnant with his fifth child, and who remains an existential threat to democracy itself, could still get his vote because of something-something sentencing reform. It just goes to show you. If you're looking for moral decency, you won't find it in the Southern Baptist Convention. Your ethics and your kids are safer outside of it.